Hello, 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 hello. Good to see you. Yes. I missed you too. Get started by creating an action script 3.0 document. And I'm going to save this one on my H drive as... Uh, here's my H drive. Yes. As my name. So, Mr. Davis for me. You have a different name. I don't know why you guys still seem to forget this. Um, and we're going to call it intro to for loops. So, intro to for loops right here. And this is going to be strictly code. So, we'll just have one layer. We'll call it actions. And then on frame one, just go ahead and tap F9 to bring up that beautifully sexy actions window that we all know and love. So before I get ahead and explain what a for loop is, let's come up with a problem, right? How do I um, count in the output from one to 10? Well, what's based on what you know, right? You do something along the lines of trace the number one, and then, you know, oops, no, run, no, stop, stop. You know, maybe copy and paste. Oh my God, I'm really bad at this today. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, make sure that's a semicolon. Okay, error is already off to a terrible start. So how do you count in the output from one to 10? We do, you know, <laughs> this is difficult. I'm just trying to copy and paste. There we go. So you do one, two, three, four, you know, five, six, seven. I'm actually going to do it just for the sake of being really cool. So how do we count in the output from one to 10? Or I guess display in the output one to 10. So let's see. How do I display in the output one to 10? There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that took quite a decent amount of time. Um, the reason being is because I had to do that ten times. What if I wanted to display in the output one to one hundred? I'd have to do this a hundred times. And that is just stupid and tedious and mean. And I'm not going to do that for you because it would be a waste of your time and a waste of my time. So there's a better solution. And that is a for loop. Okay, and the for loop consists of several parts, um, three main parts, an initializer, a test, and a counter. And what it does is based on how all these things are set up, um, it will run a certain amount of, or a certain block of code, a certain set of code, however many times you specify with those three things. So to better explain that, First, we start off with a for keyword. And I'm leaving two lines empty here just because we're going to comment some stuff below. So we start off with the keyword for. This is similar to you know function, var, anything along those lines. We want to say for. Then we open parentheses, OK? So the initializer, the test, and the counter all go inside these parentheses. The first part of the initializer is we need to set the, the initializer to something, to some kind of value. And what we're going to do here is actually create a variable on this line. Um, you could put it in another line, but we're just going to do it here because this is kind of the general structure. So we have a for loop. We're going to create a variable. So we just say var, give it a name, I give it i. Normally you go with i for anything in a for loop that is some kind of counter. Um, we'll say var i. We'll tell it the type is integer. And we'll set it equal to 0 to start. So that is the initializer part. We're just making a variable and we're setting it equal to some kind of value. And now we're going to put a semicolon. And the unique thing about this is that we're putting semicolons all on the same line. Um, we're using semicolons to separate the three parts of the for loop, or at least the, the three main parts that go inside the parentheses. So we're saying, let's space this out just a little. So here's the initializer. We created a variable i, set it equal to 0. The test is if i is less than 10, or actually not 0. Let's set it equal to 1. I'm going to set it equal to 1. Yeah. So for i is equal to 1, so that way we start at 1. And as long as i is not less than 10, but less than or equal to 10, or you could do um, 
less than 11, it works the same. So this is the test. When we put another semicolon, because we're separating the test, now we're doing the counter, we want to add one to i, so i plus plus. The other way to do that would be i plus equals one, but we don't want to type that much. We're just going to say i plus plus. So now that we have that, we have our three parts. We're going to start off with saying i equals one, and as long as i is less than or equal to 10, we'll run whatever code we want. And then each time we run, we're adding one to i. So I'll explain, it'll, it'll make more sense when I have this completed. So the next part of the four is um, a pair of curly brackets. Open, close, you're just like an if statement, a function, and the code that's gonna be run this many times is actually gonna go inside of those curly brackets. So here's the easy part. We're just gonna say trace i, okay? And what this is going to do is trace out whatever i is. So when we start, we're gonna set i equal to one, right? And we'll define all this other stuff, but we set i equal to one. So the first time it traces out i as one, it gets to the end of this curly bracket, but it's a for loop, so it needs to start again. So before it does anything else, we're adding one to i, which is what i plus plus does. So then i now becomes two. So the second time around, it says two, then three, four, five, six, seven, blah, blah, blah. And as long as i is less than or equal to 10, we're gonna do this line of code inside of here. So if we run this here, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten from the for loop. Pretty cool. Let's comment this out really quick. So we'll say it's keyword, which is four. Um, then in parentheses, we want the initializer, a semicolon, the test, semicolon, then the counter parentheses, and then we want our curly brackets. So this is the structure of the for loop. Structure, structure is there. So if I ever refer to initializer, test, counter, um, anything like that, you can know what I'm talking about. So this is the way we've done it so far. So we're setting a variable, as long as it's less than or equal to 10, I plus plus. Now maybe this is a little confusing or just a little ugly. So what you can do is say, instead of declaring the variable inside here, we can make a variable above it. So we can say var i, um, just i integer, which this actually probably isn't gonna work because we already have i. So we'll call it i2 so we don't have anything that's the same. So we'll say i2 and then when we start, we'll set i2 equal to one, i2 this, i2 that, works the same. So you can just declare the variable here and then set it equal to something here, or you can just do it all in the same line if you want to save time. But once again, here we go. Now we have three versions of that. It all works the same. But let's say we only wanted to count odd numbers, right? First, we move on and say count one to ten. And let's comment out this up here because this is wrong. So say wrong way. And then we'll just throw another ending thing here. That's a little big. So there you go. So how do I split output one to ten? This is wrong. We're gonna count. Just sorry, I'm cleaning up my English. We're gonna count one to ten. Awesome. But if we want to count evens, so let's say count evens um, one to ten. Well, how does that work? Let's take this here, right? Oops, this for loop. Let's just copy and paste it. Um, if you remember me talking about scope, you can reuse a variable name as long as it's in another function and you create it in that function. So in this case, because we're creating i inside of the for loop, i here is different from i over here. So it's okay to reuse it. But if I make i, you know, somewhere on the main part of the code, then I wouldn't be able to create it again. I could use it again, but I couldn't save var i, give it type int, whatever. So we're gonna count evens one to 10. Well, how do we do that? 
Well, we don't want to start at one because one isn't even. So we'll set this to two, right? And then i is less than 10, that's fine. But instead of saying i plus plus, let's say i plus equals two. So we'll just add two every time and then we'll trace out i. So let's separate out some stuff here. Instead of saying count one to 10, let's say trace count one to 10. So that way it actually comes up in the output. And then down here we'll say count evens one to 10. So that way we have a nice little break in our code so we know where we're at the new spot. And we can even throw in some fancy little dashes to space it out. So we're gonna count one to 10 and then count evens one to 10. And I have an error, what did I break? Conflict efficient, I. What? Really? You can't do I like that? That is a lie. A space I and definition internal. Oh, I guess flash is mean. Okay, I guess this is considering it to be, because in the parentheses, it's considering it to not be a different variable. So you could say I2 here. Um, I guess that's what we'll have to do for this. I, it will, let's, let's make this nice and simple, right? Let's say we always use I for an iteration. Instead of writing I2 and writing all that code out again, let's just declare I at the top. Okay, so we'll declare I somewhere here. So var I equals int. Most languages let you just throw it right in the for loop. I guess flash, flash doesn't like you. So we're just gonna create var I as integer. And instead of creating it, when we say var, because we put that keyword, it's creating it. We'll just say I to access it. We'll set it equal to one and we'll start our count like that. So as long as we don't intertwine these uh, functions at all, which they're not, they're completely separate, this is fine to do this. So here we go, run it now, count one to 10. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And to count evens, one to 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. Okay, but let's, let's, let's bump this up. Let's say I wanted to count the evens to 100. So I'll just change this 10 to 100, change my trace so that it says 100. And now, I've changed two simple lines of code really quick, and now I'm counting out 50 even numbers, two, four, six, eight, and it's that simple. And you can use this for some pretty cool stuff, which I'll go over in the next video, but that's the basics of it. You have the initializer, the test, and the counter. The one thing you have to watch out for with this is, and don't do this, I'm gonna do it here, is if you don't actually do anything in the count. So if I just say i equals i, right? Here, it's never gonna count, so it's gonna run this forever. And this is what's called an infinite loop, all right? If you create an infinite loop where you have something in your count that um, doesn't, doesn't end up ever meeting the end condition, meaning this whole thing right here never equals false. In this case, so I'm not counting, it'll always be two. Then we have a problem where it's gonna run forever and it's probably gonna crash flash. It'll either crash flash or your game will lock up, it won't respond. I believe flash is one of the mean programming languages where it actually just blows up and doesn't let you do anything. So if you are using any kind of loop, as you can see, it's not responding now. Is it? No, where is my, oh, okay, we have this. Okay, it is responding, but you see it has executed longer, blah, blah, blah. It has timed out, it's no longer working, it's only tracing two, and it's tracing two forever. So beware of infinite loops. Make sure you save if you have any kind of loop. There are other kind of loops we'll go into later, which if it freezes your program, if you don't have anything saved, you're screwed, you lose it all. So beware of infinite loops. Those are the three parts. I'm gonna stop rambling. I'll go on more about for loops in the next video and showing you some really cool uses. Eventually, we'll be throwing in what's called arrays and we'll be using it with our little health bar game that we made to add multiple enemies. So instead of making them all with their individual names and moving them around, we can just throw in a for loop with an array to keep track of them. And then we just say for however many we have, 
move them, do whatever code we need. So that's it. Deuces, adios, hasta mañana, luego, lego my ego. I'm wasting your time again. I don't know why you let me do this at the end because there, there's a point where you just know that I'm done, yet you keep listening because I think you like the sound of how smooth my voice is. <laughs> okay, I'm done, for real. Bye, I love you.